you up. Before we begin, I'm so thrilled to announce the winner of my 100k giveaway, Christine Altamirano, whose comment was picked at random from the pool of comments and Instagram followers. Her prize package is already on its way to her. I'm so excited for her to receive it. She seems so thrilled. I think we're both as excited as each other. Thank you all so much for entering. Hopefully it won't be too long until the next milestone and another chance to share the love. So moving on to this video, very casual format today. I just got back from New York a few days ago and this is the first chance I've really had to stop and get my bearings since I got back. I thought while I'm finally getting around to unpacking, it would be cool to share what art supplies I took with me and also show you how I used them while I was out there. So I travel light in all aspects, but especially so with supplies, I'm always looking for ways to have things at my disposal to get the look I want, but also not take up half my bag. So to start out, the most important thing, of course, is the sketchbook. I used to have a dedicated one, um, fill like a 30 page sketchbook for the whole holiday, um, something like, something like this. But I'm using my sketchbook now as more of a visual diary, so my life is kind of documented in here amongst the doodles and whatever else. This is a Stillman & Burn Azita series A5-ish soft cover sketchbook, handles wet media beautifully, no bleed through so far, lovely sturdy white pages. It's been doing a great job and it held up in my bag really well. You'll notice there's a ton of stuff just hanging out of it. I used to take a glue stick with me on holiday to paste in all the little souvenirs and things I picked up. I don't do that anymore, or at least I didn't do that this time. Instead, I opted to take a stack of post-it notes. I find them a bit more multifunctional. A, they're great for covering up mistakes, but the main use I have for them is to take notes, to sort of plan a spread without having to commit to it there and then. You want to enjoy the holiday, so you might have a spread idea in mind that's going to take you a good few hours, things to stick in and cute handwriting titles or whatever, and those few hours of perfecting and tweaking could be done at home or back at the hotel on a chill day in the holiday, and done much better if you just note down the skeleton of the idea and then go out and spend that precious little bit of holiday time you have actually making memories. All I'm saying is loose bits can stay loose, but a post-it can tell me whereabouts in the journey that fits in. And if there's something I want to write about on a particular page and I don't want to forget it, but I'm not in a position to give that writing the time it needs, quick post-it, I can write it out back at the hotel or when I get home. Speaking of writing, the next thing is pens. I take a pencil, but I don't really use it much anymore and we'll come to why in a second. Um, and obviously with a pencil you'll want an eraser and a sharpener. Pen, I take a waterproof fine liner, so something like a Copic multi-liner, a Micron would work well as well. Great for doing all your writing, but also for urban sketching, sketching in any situation, to get confident lines down, nice ink flow, get that fluidity and energy in your work. Um, this is just a brush pen that I use to fill up larger areas of black. I also take a biro. These are like my new pencil because you can use different pressures to go from the faintest of lines to deep black. These have become a real staple for me recently and the best thing is you can buy them everywhere so you're never stuck without your tool. Also, most of them are waterproof as well. So those are the basics, but I do like a bit of colour in my work. Obviously at home uh, for paint, I use gouache a lot. I like the opacity and the flat colour, but to take those away with me and like set them up with my minimal approach isn't really going to work. So I was rummaging through my things looking for an alternative, thinking wouldn't it be great if I had some like paint markers or something. And I found these, um, these are chalk markers and a company called Chalkola sent them to me a while ago. They're cool, but I didn't really know how I would find a use for them since they're more designed for non-porous surfaces like glass or just not paper, basically. But I tried it on paper and it worked pretty well. Um, I just picked a few colours that I liked together. Didn't want to take the whole set and also working with a limited palette gives you a nice look with your work as well. And yeah, these worked well as they stand in for paint markers. Great way to get that bold flat colour if that's a look that you go for. With them being chalk markers, I'm not sure if I'll need to use spray fixative to stop the colour rubbing onto the opposite page, but I probably will just to be safe. And you could also just try traditional alcohol markers if you prefer more of a watery look. 
Now, in terms of watercolors, since I've started experimenting with them again, especially in my drawings of buildings, I was really keen to take some with me as well. And I always have brought watercolors to travel journal with. You might have seen them in my niece travel video. I don't remember if I showed it, but I'm pretty sure it was my cheapy off-brand watercolor palette. The paint tin itself is a bit big and an awkward shape doesn't fit in my pencil case. I also did just want to step up the quality of my paints since I'm kind of rediscovering my love of watercolour. And as luck would have it, and I'm a true believer in fate, about a week before I headed off, Steve Padden, who is the creator of the Portable Painter, contacted me and asked if I'd like to try a sample of this nifty thing. I watched a few reviews and unboxings for it, it just looked ideal. So it actually arrived a day before we were flying out. One thing I will say, I was quite apprehensive with it because I've never filled up my own palette before. I've been looking into it, um, you might remember me talking in one of my 30 ways videos about how I do struggle with tube watercolours and a lot of people commented saying that they had the same issue and found that a great solution was to just dry them out in pans. So I have looked into it but thankfully the little leaflet that comes with this thing also directed me to their website where they have videos from a few creators about how to fill pans and what colours you might want to take and the difference in cheap and expensive ones really helped and that evening you can see the sun going down in this footage. This was the night before we were leaving and I still hadn't packed yet but I picked out a few colours and I filled my half pans. Had a bit of difficulty at first but kind of started to figure it out. But yeah it's basically just realised I didn't even explain it properly. It's a portable paint palette, it folds out, the outer casing becomes two pots for your water, one for cleaning your brush, one for wetting it. The two pots also act as a stand, so you can put this down wherever. My favourite way to use it was actually on my lap, so with the sides holding onto my thigh. You know how when you sit down and your thigh just expands? This is the one time I'm actually grateful for that because it actually holds onto this so comfortably and sturdily. Even with water in it, I felt confident that it wouldn't fall. Um, there's a little paintbrush that folds out and has a finer point inside. I know I'm going on about this a lot, I just honestly think it's so nifty. I'm really grateful to Steve, who seems like such a nice guy, by the way. It's just one of those clever inventions done just right. Uh, he also really kindly sent me an extra portable painter, which is one of the surprises included in the giveaway bundle. It's been really hard to keep that a secret. But that's it, it all fits into this pencil case that I think is actually a makeup bag. I got it as part of a monthly beauty subscription I was signed up to at the time. Uh, now, before I go off on any more tangents, I haven't had a proper night's sleep since I got back. I need to finish unpacking. I'm hoping to make a few videos related to travel journaling. This will be a short, maybe three to five-ish episode series. So if there are any topics that you'd like me to cover, please let me know down below. And let me know if you'd be interested in a kind of New York vlog, maybe? I did a bit of filming, but I don't know if that's something anyone would really want to see. And of course, I will see you all soon with some painting and drawing videos as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.